Hey Canaries, it's Dr. Natasha here. Uh, I'm gonna give this one second because I'm trying to control my phone and my camera. So I'm gonna share this into the Canary group right now so I can get to all you Canaries. Okay, great. So it's pretty late here right now in California, and I bet it's even later where all of you are right now. Um, I had a really, really long work day, and um, it was one of those 14-hour nonstop work days, switching between a bunch of different tasks, like online team meetings, web design, um, seeing patients in Berkeley, and just odds and ends here. Um, and as I was Getting ready to head home today, I realized I didn't have any groceries at home, I didn't have any food prepped, and my mind immediately wanted to get some takeout or eat something kind of nasty. So I decided to go to the grocery store and pick up some foods that would be healthier than some nasty takeout, and I was so shocked at what I found at Safeway um, that I was actually really excited to just get on and share it with people because it, to me, the fact that I can find foods that are cleaner at my local Safeway wasn't Whole Foods, it wasn't my local Berkeley Bowl. Um, I was really, really excited to see that shift happening in the mainstream food industry. So I wanted to share some of my finds today with you. Um, and I know that all the Safeways are different and I live in Northern California, so my the distribution around here is probably um, a lot more, I don't know, avant-garde, and they have a lot of products that they're probably testing in the Northern California market, but I was so excited. Like, I, I spent way too long in Safeway because I found all these products that were gluten-free, that were da dairy-free, um, that were even paleo-approved. They had a big paleo sticker on them at Safeway. Um, now, a couple months ago, I moved out to the suburbs of Berkeley. I practice in Berkeley. I've lived there for the past decade. And I moved out towards the suburbs closer to Napa. And there isn't a, there isn't a Whole Foods nearby. And I have to make a, I have to plan and make a trip to go to um, a grocery store that has, like, um, a lot of organic options. Hi, Dad. <laughs> I saw my dad just joined the live video. Um, I'm glad you're watching, Dad. It's late where you are. Um, so anyway, I couldn't make it to a Whole Foods on my way home, and so I reluctantly decided to go to Safeway, hoping I could find just some produce that would be organic or something, and I was so excited to find products that were gluten-free and dairy-free, so I want to share some of those with you. Um, now, mostly what I'm eating these days is gluten-free and dairy-free, so this is kind of the haul. It was, I was really excited about this, so... Um, I want to show you all what you can eat. Um, this is definitely not autoimmune um, protocol friendly. There's a lot of spices or nightshades in these foods, but the autoimmune protocol is not meant to be a lifestyle, forever lifetime diet. It's meant for healing and flare-ups and things like that. So um, I've done that in the past, but I'm mostly gluten-free, dairy-free right now with rice in there. That's the only grain that I'm eating. So we'll start here with the obvious stuff, with the produce. Um, Safely has some amazing berries here that are all organic and actually really affordable. So I picked up some blackberries and some strawberries, and I found organic mandarins, which I have to say I have a really hard time finding organic mandarins. I will eat them sometimes, and I love cuties, but I will avoid them because I don't really find organic ones that often. So that produce was really exciting to find. I also found organic avocados. Um, I think they were a little too expensive for what they were. They are about $3 each. But I went for them because I like to put them in my smoothies. Um, I know a lot of you guys have seen me talk about my green smoothies. So I got those ingredients. I got organic basil at Safeway, um, organic cucumbers. And they have organic Persian cucumbers. And the thing that I love about Safeway, which I'm so shocked to be saying this because honestly I was so anti-Safeway for so many years. But as I'm going there now, I'm finding that they have like Persian cucumbers and they're the organic ones and they're the same exact ones that I get at Whole Foods and Berkeley Bowl and they're so much cheaper at Safeway. It's the same company, same packaging, um, but at Safeway they're... And that's a couple of the other products that I found. So they have Persian cucumbers but also these larger, um, the juicier ones that I use for my smoothies, these cucumbers. They have arugula and all of this produce was organic, the parsley and everything. So I got that and I was super stoked. 
And then I went to the meat department, not expecting to find meat at Safeway that I would eat, um, but I found grass-fed beef for $6.99 a pound. Like, I buy a lot of meat, um, and I'm always really careful about, you know, being organic or grass-fed or trying to get it as local as possible. This isn't local meat, so that's the biggest downfall of it. But honestly, I've never seen grass-fed beef for $6.99 a pound. Um, I don't know what it's like where you live, but it's always a minimum. I'm excited to find it for $9.99 a pound. Um, this says it's a product of Australia, but um, there was grass-fed beef, and it was really affordable at Safeway. Um, this is one of my favorite brands of rice pasta. If any of you try rice pasta, um, I really like this. They make macaroni, they make, you know, kind of those spirally, they make penne, but it's pretty much just organic brown rice and water on the ingredients. So um, a little while ago, somebody had picked up, let me show this to you. Somebody had picked up gluten-free pasta for me from Safeway and I was, I had just requested it, hoping to get that. And I got this one and I would not recommend this if any of you have ever had it. If you look at the ingredients, the first ingredient is corn, corn flour, and then rice, and then things that are not stuff that I see coming directly out of the earth. So I would not eat this kind of gluten-free pasta. I would eat this kind, organic brown rice pasta. Um, and then along with that, they actually had some great sauces. So for a really quick meal, I would just, you know, saute up some ground beef or make meatballs and boil some pasta and then get, um, I got a spicy one, so if people are avoiding nightshades, um, obviously you can't have pasta sauce. You could make a AIP pesto alternative, um, but this one didn't have any creepy things like citric acid or any sort of xanthan gum. It was all stuff that I could read and understand what it was, so that was really exciting. Um, and then I went on to find a couple really high quality oils. So I found um, Lauren who recently started working in our office. Some of you guys may have seen her picture. She really recommended walnut oil recently to make um, dressings for salad. I've never tried it so if anybody has any recommendations for walnut oil, um, how to add it to salad dressings or what to drizzle it on, drizzle it on um, I'd love to hear that. And I picked up some sesame oil um, which was non-GMO. She's pretty excited about that because normally I don't find that at the Asian grocery stores. Um, so those are probably the more standard stuff. And then they did have this brand of co coconut milk, which if you look at the ingredients is just coconut milk and water, um, which I was really excited about. Now it doesn't have the organic or the um, BPA free can lining, but hey, I'm, I'm going to a Safeway that's open 24 hours and I'm stoked to find coconut and water. Um, and so the, those are kind of the more whole food type things. Now I want to show you some of what I would call a, um, junk foods or, I don't know, they're like cheap foods, but they're still healthy to the point where they don't make me feel disgusting or flared up, especially after I've done reintroductions. And this is where I get really excited when I start seeing products on the market that are gluten-free, dairy-free, or paleo. So with back here, this brand of potato chips, I actually really like them. I've reintroduced white, white potatoes and do pretty well with them. I don't overdo it, but I do like Boulder Canyon, um, especially these avocado oil sea salt ones. And this was this was at my local Safeway. It's non-GMO, um, it's gluten-free, and they have one that's made with coconut oil too. So that's really great. I like this company a lot. They use non-GMO potatoes. Um, the next... One of my other favorite companies that comes out of Chicago is called Simple Mills. Um, I wouldn't recommend this if you guys are trying to do like a healing diet, um, but it's a nice treat. And they make all kinds of pastries and um, pizza doughs without tapioca or cassava, which I have to tell you, I search so far and wide for things without tapioca or cassava because tapioca and cassava are gluten cross-reactants for me. I ran a blood test, found that out, and I've been avoiding it since. So they have this a really amazing vanilla cupcake mix which we make and it's just almond flour, coconut sugar, arrowroot, coconut flour, baking soda, and sea salt. Really simple. Um, I don't overdo it. I don't think I do great with the arrowroot flour, but it's really nice to have a cupcake every once in a while. Um, they also make a really great pancake waffle. It's delicious. I know a lot of people I've made it for prefer it to traditional ones. It's similar ingredients, almond flour, arrowroot, um, coconut, baking soda, and salt. So 
This is really delicious if you've never tried it. And pizza dough. So this is similar. It's, I mean, I would say the worst ingredient in this is arrowroot powder, which I don't even think is too much of a culprit, but I'm pretty amazed with Simple Mills. They're, they're a company out of Chicago. Oh, I had, um, I picked up a, I don't even know where it is. I put it away. They also have cupcake frosting, which is just made out of like coconut oil and some cacao powder. It's pretty exciting to have desserts when you're eating paleo or gluten-free, dairy-free. Um, so those were the things that I've seen before, but tonight I, oh, and then also I've, I've had this before. This is, if I am to eat bread, which I don't very often, this is the only company and the only bread I will get. It's a gluten-free Rudy's bread, um, and it's original, and I'll tell you the reason that I get it. Uh, I mean, I know there's a lot of gluten-free breads on the market, but the reason I get it is because there is zero tapioca and cassava in there. Um, so you can see in there, I mean, I think the worst thing is xanthan gum. I think I react a little to the yeast because of some candida stuff, but honestly, I think this is one of the cleanest gluten-free breads I've seen. A lot of gluten-free breads use alternate grains like um, millet and things like that. And again, I ran a blood test and millet and all those alternate grains cross react with gluten for me. So even if I was doing that, I would still be having gluten type reactions and not know it, which can be really frustrating for people. So this one's just a rice based one, um, without any tapioca, which is so unheard of. Um, and then this is the part that I really wanted to share with you because honestly, like, it was, it was an incredibly long work day. I didn't have food ready and I will get takeout sometimes and I always regret it. I never feel good after I eat takeout, even if it's supposedly clean or it's gluten-free or whatever. And I, you know, I, I specify that with the restaurant or the, this wait staff or the chefs. I honestly never feel good after I eat takeout at a restaurant. And I think one of the reasons is because they're not careful for the most part in their kitchens. They, you know, use the same utensils, the same cutting board. So there's a lot of cross reactivity in the kitchens, but also it's, even if they say the food is gluten-free or it's cleaner or it's organic, they can be adding all kinds of other additives, um, preservatives, chemicals to enhance the flavor or for whatever reason for texture. And they don't have to disclose that. And you end up being the really obnoxious person when you're trying to order those things. So I get, you know, I try not to order too much takeout. But, the, you know, to be honest, there's days when you just don't have time to cook or you don't have um, the things at home and it's just you're working hard or you're having a hard time. So I was so excited to find these first at Safeway that I think are relatively clean, um, especially as opposed to like a takeout that I might get. So, um, well, we got chicken sausage here just because I prefer to make my own. I think you guys have seen my recipes, but again, for those mornings when I'm either going to eat nothing or eat a sausage. I don't love this. I don't love this company. Um, it, it will do in a pinch, but I think they were bought out recently and um, I'm not loving the quality of it, but I think it'll do in a pinch and it's available at my Safeway. But more importantly, there are these three companies right now that I want to share with you. This one's called Saffron Road and they make gluten-free halal, um, you know, I don't know, gluten-free pad thai and gluten-free beef bulgogi, which is so exciting to me. Um, I love Korean food and I can never eat the bulgogi anymore because they always use soy sauce. And this is a frozen dinner. Again, I don't love that it's frozen. I don't love that it's in um, plastic packaging, but in a pinch or on a difficult night, you know, like if I'm working all day, I'd rather eat this at home than get takeout at a Korean restaurant, which I don't know how clean their kitchen will be. So finding gluten-free bulgogi is really exciting for me, and I'll show you guys the ingredients here. Um, so there's, a, there's soy in there, which I don't love. I don't do soy a lot. It messes with my menstrual cycle and my female hormones, but on occasion, I will have it because it's delicious. Um, it's definitely not AIP, um, or these are not paleo ingredients, but they're gluten-free and dairy-free. Sorry for the shaking. Let me try to get this more stable. So anyway, there's, you know, of all the things... I would say the worst thing on this is, um, I don't even know, I'm trying to read this real quick. You can see like xanthan gum. I would feel, I think xanthan gum is one of the worst things on this ingredients, but there's no MSG, there's no flavor enhancers, and it's a gluten-free Korean dish. Um, then we have this gluten-free pad thai, similar. I think the worst ingredient on here is like xanthan gum. Yeah, there's xanthan gum there. 
Then there's this new company that came out. I actually think it's based in the Bay Area. Maybe not. Maybe Denver. I don't know. But this is called Feel Good Foods, and they make Asian foods also gluten-free, which is so exciting to me because I love Asian foods. So Pad Siu was formerly one of my favorite Thai dishes. It's wide rice noodles. Again, I want to applaud this company for using rice noodles that are actually just made out of rice and water. A lot of rice noodles that you'll get these days have tapioca mixed into them, have a bunch of other garbage that you don't want to be eating. So, you know, the worst thing in here is cornstarch, canola oil, some um, gluten-free soy sauce, but it's still soy sauce. So it's not the greatest, but it's better than what you would pick up at a local Thai restaurant because I guarantee they're using sauces that are not as clean as this one, even if you're getting gluten-free pad thai or whatever their gluten-free dishes. So at least I know with this that the noodles don't have tapioca. I know that the soy sauce is actually gluten-free soy sauce. It's not the one fermented with wheat. So this company, I'm pretty excited to try this. Um, and they also make kind of a breaded chicken. So again, I think the worst ingredient on this is potato starch or um, some citric acid. Probably there's cornstarch in there. I'm not really reading it all right now. But you can take a look at that. So I have never tried these. I have tried saffron rolled beef gulgogi and I was actually pretty impressed. I would not recommend this for a regular night dinner, but keeping them, keeping them in the freezer is something that keeps me from getting junk food or um, takeout from a restaurant, which I will definitely regret. But the last thing I want to show you that I was so excited about was to find this company called Beatnik. And it's actually paleo friendly. Um, it's grass fed beef meatballs with marinara sauce, carrots, and zucchini. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's gluten free, it's dairy free. And if you look at the ingredients, oh, I gotta run. That was my haul. Um, but thanks for watching, and I'm excited that Safeway is shifting. So, if you guys have any questions, I'll throw some links in there so you can order some of this stuff online because I know it's available on Amazon too. Thanks.